Good evening, everyone. You're most welcome to uh, this evening's event in the series of uh, CSI Talks on the Future of Religious Minorities in the Middle East. Now, we've had many uh, outstanding speakers in the series of talks, and some of them have been uh, outstanding academics, others have been distinguished journalists, others have been uh, very prominent human rights and political activists. And tonight, our speaker, William Warda, combines all of these elements. He has been at one time or another all of these things and um, has made a very big impact in Iraq uh, because of these activities. It's particularly uh, timely that William is, is uh, here because, as we all know from the news, the military campaign to uh, uh, reconquer uh, the city of Mosul is underway. Everybody reckons that this is a, uh, a decisive moment in the battle against the, uh, the Islamic State in Iraq. And William comes to us with uh, great Mosul credentials. He grew up in Mosul. He went to university uh, in Mosul. Uh, during the, uh, the first liberation of Mosul in 2003, he participated as a leader of the uh, Assyrian Democratic Movement's political and military wing, working together with General Petraeus uh, to secure the Christian villages around Mosul and go into Mosul and work together with General Petraeus to uh, reestablish civil uh, government, a civil authority after the collapse of the Saddam uh, Hussein uh, regime. And after that, uh, William was a resident in uh, one of the villages that uh, has just recently been um, uh, reoccupied from the uh, Islamic State. So William today is um, a leading figure and co-founder of the Hammurabi Human Rights Organization, which is CSI's humanitarian and human rights partner in uh, Iraq. When I, uh, I've been going to Iraq since 2007 and working closely with uh, William Warda, uh, his wife Pascal, and other volunteers from the Hammurabi Human Rights Organization. And he's also today the chairman of the Alliance of Iraqi uh, Minorities, which is a, a group representing all of the, um, the uh, uh, minority communities that you find, especially in the Nineveh area around the city of Mosul, Yazidis, Shabaks, Christians. So uh, William is currently the chairman uh, of that and has just come to Zurich from Berlin where he was having consultations with the Atlantic Council. So let us give William Warda a very warm welcome to Zurich. Hello to everyone. In the beginning, I would like to ex express my gratitude and appreciation to CSI for holding this event. My greatest gratitude to Mr. John Eibner for inviting me and for being offered the honor for talking to you. Indeed, I appreciate the CSI distinguished and wonderful role in supporting our people, especially Christians and Yazidis and other vulnerable people who were suffering from Daesh. Exercises in very critical time of their lives. CSI was with those people in very, very hard time and they supported them, and we appreciate this effort, really. I am thanking CSI for choosing me to talk about the future of pluralism in Iraq in this critical time while Iraqi forces trying to liberate this area and to, uh, uh, to sweep Daesh from... Mosul and other places of Iraq. In reality, talking about the religious pluralism in Iraq 
requires to recognize some facts. One of the these facts, the first fact is published published in the media, what is published in the media concerning the religious diversity or the minority doesn't reflect or don't reflect the reality of their situation, of the real situation. Most of what is published is for the purpose of promoting the political interests of certain parties to present them as a sponsor of protection minorities. The religious minorities are living in very tragic situation. They have been subject to injustice since First World War and since the Psycho Speaker Agreement, that uh, agreement which divided the area, the, the, the area of Middle East to in between some powerful country. In Iraq, Christians and Yazidis as non-Muslim minority have been subject to injustice since Iraq became a state in 1921. Christians, for example, faced three massacres, Semel massacre at 1933, at the monarchy time. Other massacre was Soria massacre at 1969. Al Anfal massacre 1988, at the time of Ba'ath and the time of Saddam regime. The massacre of Semel was carried out nine months following the acceptance of Iraq as a member of the League of Nations. And after Iraq signing the condition for the protection of minority. So Iraq signed to protect the minority, but after nine months, they committed massacres against Christian Assyrian in Iraq. Uh, I will talk about this massacre, how many villages were empty and how many people were killed. Other fact is, it is normal in Iraq to see or hear from influenced persons who are in the power, in the government, for example, from the large component, from the large majority, from the majority of, the, of Iraqi uh, groups, introducing or pretending themselves as defender or protector of minorities, rise. But in the reality, they are not. They are doing that just for the interest of their parties to show that their parties or component or, or their group believe in diversity to be accepted internationally and not not because they re, uh, in reality dignify minorities we always hear them when we meet them you are the flower of iraq you are indigenous people of iraq iraq is nothing without you But in reality, when the issue is coming for a Christian to have important position in government level or in some institution, even in the independent commission, no one gives to this Christian a chance or any share. So they will push him out. Every Iraqi wants to be his neighbor from the Christian, just to feel safe that this neighbor will not jump in his house to loot it or to abuse his wife or daughter. But it is it is haram. It is prevent. It is it is forbidden for this neighbor to be in a powerful position or in some very important level the power. <clears throat> we didn't see those who show themselves defenders for the rights of minorities. They didn't support minority in their campaign to amend a law that viola violates their rights. 
violate their Christian rights. Or they didn't support them to remove the encroachment upon their village in KRI, the Kurdistan region of Iraq. So we are used to see this kind of people that sometimes we are called them their their this is a phenomena of political hy hypocrisy. One of the sample of this political hypocrisy, uh, hypocrisy is that until this day, the Christian with support of other non-Muslim minority failed to change one article of the national identity law which target the right of non-Muslim minority. The article 26, this article uh, is considered the minors and children, the minors, Muslim, when when one of the parents convert to Islam, they automatically, they he became Muslim. Even his age is one month, less one month. So he became Muslim while one of the parents convert to Islam. So we were doing campaign to change this article, at least to keep those children on their religion until they became 18 years, 18 years and they choose what they would like to choose. Other fact, international community involvement for the sake of the protection of minority were very weak. I am not denying the efforts of United Nations in carrying in the last three years for minority rights, but I am inquiring about the size of that pay attention compared to the dangerous violation undertaken by the large component with obsessive authoritarian tendency. Also, at, that, at the time of American and Western presence in Iraq from 2003 till 2011, and although for their effective influence in the decision-making, particularly in the political and security field, in the security field in Iraq, they didn't pay a clear attention to their minority rights, especially those non-Muslim minorities. It was clear minority were out of the American and British equation in Iraq. The attention of American was allocated only to Shiite, Sunni, and Kurd. While non-Muslim minority, especially Christian, have paid the price of American presence in Iraq with American indifference to their dilemma. Other fact is the number of non-Muslim minorities has declined gradually day after day in the Middle East, in general, special or especially Christian. This is this, de this declining is due to many reasons. Fanatism, extremism, terrorism, armed violence, lack of justice, discrimination, isolation, lack the rule of law, and exclu exclusion policies. Decline in real jobs and educational opportunities opportunity for minorities. These different factors contribute in one, Christians have lost their elements of power which was scientific potential and economic capabilities. This was the Christian the power of the Christian in Iraq when their number was one million and a half they were controlling the economic position and also they were well educated and there was very smart doctors, engineers and pharmacists and all these uh, position that was needed by the Christian. Their population percentage were 
as a population was 2 to 3 percent of Iraqi population, but their percentage among qualified Iraqis was 16 percent. So you can see the, the difference. They lost their commercial position. They were controlling small businesses like hotels, pharmacies, restaurants, small supermarkets, skills businesses, bank manager, teachers, professors, and the universities. Because they are displaced from their region, they have lost their ingredient of power. So, in near future, we may expect illiteracy in the Christian community while the illiteracy rate was zero in the Christian community of Iraq. Also, there is abstention from marriage and forming new family. There is now, after the, they were displaced and they are, they are in very worse situation, from 10 Christian girls, two have the chance to get married, while spinsterhood prevail among the others. There is decreasing in the percentage of childbirth because of the miserable situation they are living. Lack of opportunity of education. Many of children now, they not going to school because they are in camps and the schools are very far and uh, the family, they cannot support the expenses of transportation and other expenses. The waves of terrorism and violences which strengthened its grip of Iraq reality, of Iraqi reality, high percentage of minority consists considered the migration as the main solution for their dilemma. Now, they are just thinking how to immigrate because of economic and political complicated situation and also the level of terrorism and fanatism in the area. So the number of Christians from one million and half 2003 became now not exceed 300,000. That means more than 70% of population of Christian left the country. Another fact, we have to recognize that there is conflict inside each minority. This is one of the problem of minorities. Inside minority and also between minority themselves. This kind of conflict disrupt the attitude of the minority in regards to certain issues. The, sometimes the political diversity and pluralism in organization and institution is a is good indication, but in Iraq, this scenario is different. In Iraq, political diversity has been based on personal and material interests and is often framed religiously or ethnically or racial nationality. Therefore, the patronage phenomena increased for certain political entities on the expense of having a united position. This was one of the problem of the minority, uh, all, the, all the weakest minority, sometimes they are sponsored by or with by other uh, majority uh, groups, they are stealing the, the real representation. They are they are pushing some minorities in the position, but they are via or, or belong to that majority. For example, in the court they they find some Christian, they push them in some position, but. He is not working for the minority themselves, they, they work for the majority. Or some Sunni and Shiite, they are pushing some uh, person or personnel from minority in some position, but in the reality, he cannot work for the real rise of, minor, of minority. Meanwhile, such situation encourages the largest component 
to attract a number of minorities personnel to be via them or to support them for some position and in such ways they are stealing the real representation from the minority. Therefore, patronage have been given in one way or another to the large comp- to the large group instead of being for defending the right of the minority itself. Another fact, there is a lack of communication between the people of the of each minority in regional country. For example, let's take the Christian as an example, the Christian of Syria, Christian of Iraq, Christian of Egypt, Christian of Jordan. There is there is lack of communication between people of each minority in the regional countries. What I mean, communication, for example, between Christian of Iraq with uh, uh, with Christian of Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, etc. The same thing for Ezidis. There is Ezidi in Syria, Turkey, and the same thing. There is there is lack in communication between those minority. There is no real bridges for joint work, which could help to pres- preserve their identity. For example, there are promotion in media of some certain proposal to unify the attitude of Christian of Middle East. We, we, we are hearing now there is conference in Lebanon, there is conference in other places to unify. But in the reality, the work aiming to unite their position is marginal, is, is not just just in media, there is nothing practical uh, to strong the the unity and the attitude of uh, minorities. Other fact, the mentality that rule those who are in the power in Iraq, whether who are in Erbil from KRG, Kurdistan Regional Government, or those who are in Baghdad, federal government, is to dominate by having no limit of power with indifference toward others like minority or religious minority rights. Therefore, they are acting with complete freedom to achieve their goals fueled by two ideas concerning minorities. The first idea is dominating, controlling, and containing minority capabilities. They, they are always trying to contain. This is, this is one of idea. And the other idea, which is used, the second idea, eradication, rather than isolation and, contain, and containment. They, also they don't believe of containing. Uh, uh, they, they, they believe on eradication or removing the minority from there. Both ideas have no counterpart, counterparts to, re, to resist them by minorities, oh, because of the weakness of minority. Therefore, the power limits of minorities are always hacked. Another fact, the reality indicates that the area is witnessing a fundamentalist Islamic expansion since 80s and early 90s. In the society, this fanatism and extremism phenomena is raising day by day. In Iraq, the expansion of fanatism has become very clear after the Kuwait war and the international embargo on Iraq. Because of the worst economic and complicated political situation, people started to seek salvation through becoming close to the religion. Saddam Hussein led the wave to launch his faith campaign in 1994. Faith campaign uh, uh, I will speak about it. He placed 
the term Allahu Akbar that mean uh, that means God is great on the Iraqi flag. Social clubs, bars, nightclubs, liquor stores were closed. Uh, two days ago, uh, John was following the news from Baghdad while I, I had no communication. Uh, and after that, I checked with my colleague. Two days ago, the Iraqi parliament vote to close, to ban liquor selling and buying liquors in Iraq. So, the mentality, imagine what mentality now ruling the country. I will complete with a uh, faith campaign. Children, employees, and his securities, as that's Saddam security, and the military members were taken to courses to memorize the Quran. And religious education was imposed. In other hand, Saudi Arabia ex exploited poverty in northern Iraq because in the 90s, there was in the area was under embargo and the court were uh, in very bad situation in economically. Saudi Arabia uh, exploited this economic uh, bad or worse economic situation so it offered support through islamic aid agencies to build mosques and religious institutions in the kri kurdistan regional of iraq this change came with a negative effect after the fall of saddam regime uh, and other facts the protection of religious minority can only achieve in a state which respect the rule of law and work with institutional system and also if there is a will from those who are ruling the country to build or establish a coexistence between the different groups of the Iraqi society and they believe those who are in the, in the power believe in the equal citizenship and give a guarantees and provide protection and comfort for minorities. To feel equally right and real protection, real participation in, in different institutions of the state. Uh, establishing a, a theoric uh, and a state ruled by a, uh, a theoretic ideology or ra uh, uh, racial tendencies in the country of ethnic, religious, cultural diversity will lead to discrimination. What I mean, uh, if the country was ruled by, by a theocratic ideology or racial tendency for the country like Iraq, with multicultural, with multi-ethnic, with multi-religious, for sure will will lead that will lead to the discrimination because they cannot be fair. Uh, they, uh, they they cannot be neutral. But if we come to the reality in Iraq, it exposes weakness to impose the law. So I said. What is better to the, minor, the, the, the minority is if there is a country, a state, uh, respect human rights, uh, respect the equal citizenship, and, uh, and secure and believe on diversity. But, but in Iraq, if we come to the reality in Iraq, it exposes weakness to impose the law. There is anarchy and also presents discrimination against non-Muslim minors. There is discrimination everywhere and also there are some laws uh, discriminate uh, uh, non-Muslim minors. In addition of that, 
the authority has no control to establish security and settlement in the state. In such anarchy and chaos situation with political and security tension and the absence of the rule of law, this makes minority subject to the danger of unrestrained armed group. There is militia, there is unrestrained uh, armed group everywhere. I believe that the minority can survive under a contemporary civil state with decentralized democratic system that recognizes religious, political, ethnic, and cultural diversity within the context of the regional unity of the country. This is the solution. If there is as an, uh, a country uh, believe in diversity and human rights, so this is just the environment that the minority can survive. Mentioning these 10 facts will facilitate us to analyze and debate how religious minority suffered and struggled in the era of Saddam also in the second phase after 2003, after thrown Saddam out then till criminal of Daesh came to the region. What is required in such chaotic situation, anarchy situation, to keep the minority survive, I think minority are seeking for protection. We need, they need protection with international grantees of protection. Why, the question, why international grantees? Because minority lost the trust of the central government and lost the trust with KRG, Kurdistan uh, Regional Government. They were already who protecting them before Daesh. Suddenly withdraw and leave the minority to to face the 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 criminal, those criminal of Daesh. They didn't fight. They suddenly withdraw from the area without warning the minority. So, the minority cannot trust either central government or... That's why I'm asking, and even this is not my request, uh, request but all the minority that I need they need guarantees they need some uh, support from the international society because minority lost the trust I said they need a kind of new mandate or sponsorship by a superpower or to be governed by people of their area with the sponsorship of UN or any other international power. So they need a transitional time to, to find people from the area to rule the area and under the supervision of uh, UN or, or any superpower. They need a new role of international society for protecting their properties and lands, whether in Iraq generally or in Kurdistan region. While international didn't offer enough attention to minority in general, and especially for non-Muslim minority, they didn't have any protection, whether politically or securely. As I said before, the non-Muslim minority, with all their different institution they failed to amend an article 26 of the national identity law. Besides that, they, they didn't witness any significant international pressure on the government of Iraq or the Iraqi parliament for the for purpose of amending the, uh, this article. Or 
apropos the, 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 the international society didn't support the non-Muslim when they were trying in their campaign to change an article which is Islamized their children. Also, there is another important issue required to keep minority surviving, which is transitional justice and implementing a strong justice system. I think you should know in my country, Christian Yazidis have suffered from injustice. For example, after establishing Iraq as state, Christian have suffered, as I said, from three massacres. The fourth one, what, what took place against them by Daesh. As this, what, what happened uh, and what took place on 2014 against Christian and Yazidis was another massacre added to the old massacres. So May 1933 and Surya 1969 and Anfal 1988. Daesh massacre 2014. This is four massacres. In Sumail, Christian lost 66 villages and more than 3,000 people were killed. All these Christian, Christian Assyrian. In Surya, 36 people were killed, including the priest of the village. In one, in one second, they killed all these without any accountability to those who committed this uh, crime. During Al Anfal military process done by Saddam, more than 120 Christian Assyrian Chaldean villages were destroyed, and more than 150 Christian went missing. Dozens of church and monasteries were destroyed. Some of the church, their history go back to the first century of Christianity. In the 6th century and 7th century and 8th century, these church were, and monastery were destroyed. There is, until this day, there is until this day encroachment on the villages and lands of Christian in the area of Dohok, Amadiya, Zaho, and Ankawa. 53 villages in Dohok in KRG region suffer from encroachment. One of them, one of my villages, maybe Mr. John visited Chakala, is, uh, is along is the, on the Khabo River in Barwari Bala. Christian and Yazidis have also Faced in 2011 acts of violence when their stores, female hair st styling, salon, hotel, and casinos were burned by radical court in the Hog, Zaho, and Sumer. Christian lost their hope to live in Kur Kurdistan region as a safe haven to them, so they still feel unsafe there. That's why thousands of families immigrate outside the region to Europe or U.S. or other Australia and other places. In such long period of suffering along the history of Iraq, the questions that should be raised, who will bring the transitional justice? While Iraq justice system is not very well qualified, to achieve justice because justice and estab establishing trust require justice for the victims and accountability for the perpetrators. Many cr crimes against Christian and Yazidis in 2008 in Mosul and uh, the Lady of Salvation uh, event and its massacre also, 2010, uh, nobody brought to the court who, those who committed criminal in Mosul and killed Christian and deported Christian. No one know about the result of the investigation. The judicial system in Iraq is not so qualified and uh, it's very 
difficult to depend on uh, on it because also now there is talk about corruption reach this system and other important issue required for surviving is the true and fair representation I spoke about the minority face lack of real and fair representation their representation is always confiscated for the best interest of the large groups and political parties of majority now let's come to the era of Ba'ath Party and the time of Saddam. Saddam regime ruled the country through totalitarianism policy. He distributed injustice equally for or fairly to the all all Iraqi groups. Through ideology aiming just to protect his regime, he tried to change the priorities of Iraqis instead of looking forward to de- to democracy freedom and development the Iraqi people forced to think about survival due to the wars he was always in the wars he changed the mind of the Iraqi instead of thinking about democracy and development they were thinking how to survive to save their lives from the wars he caused an unjust embargo on Iraq due to the invasion of Kuwait. Non-Muslim, minor, Non-Muslim minority adding to its fair share of injustice alongside other Iraqis suffered more after the launch of his faith campaign I spoke about in 1994. That campaign paved the road for the rise of religious radicalism in the country against non-Muslim minorities. That is besides, Christian lost more than 50,000 young men during Iraq-Iran war. 50,000 Christian, young Christian. They were either killed or missing or, or held prisoners. They also lost hundreds during the invasion and liberation Kuwait. Saddam committed a genocide in, in K.R. I. The thousands of the village in the era, in the area, were whipped off the map, including more than one seven one one hundred seventy-five villages of Assyrian Chaldean Christian, especially in Dohok and Nineveh during the 70, 70s and eighties. One hundred seventy-five villages were destroyed. Christian villages were destroyed by Saddam. And uh, as I said, their churches and 120 villages were destroyed during an Anfal military operation 1988, while villagers were forced to leave toward Iran and Turkey seeking safety. He used the internationally forbidden chemical weapon in certain area, including Halabja where a number of Christian were killed as well. He killed a number of Christian cleric, including a Syrian patriarch, bishop and, pat- and priests, because they weren't loyal to him. They were killed indirectly by placing poison in their foods or fabricated car accidents. I mentioned that in my PC in my master degree, the, the names of the priests and bishops and yeah. he denied a Syrian Chaldean and Syria to to learn their Syriac Aramic language to educate or learn their Syriac Aramic language which is spoken by not less than a million Iraqis he used the embargo as an as an as an excuse to force Iraqis to submit according to a theory followers used to repeat it hunger your dog and he shall follow you this was one of the theory of Saddam uh, his followers were always repeated hunger your dog and he shall follow you while 
taking no responsibility for the suffering of the Iraqis citing the imposed embargo by American with international cover. Therefore, Iraqi, Iraqis were exhausted. The embargo was horrible and more tragic, tragic for Christian and Ezidi because it's, it also led to closing the political and economic horizon. For the first time in the time of uh, embargo, we had Christian bigger in the city. Before that, you cannot see Christian. They were in a very uh, good situation economically. It's important to mention the, imp the important role of the Iraqi church, which organized relief programs, included everybody with our differentiation. Minority condition post change. 2003. The media showed that the Western forces after 2003, when American came to Iraq, the media always was showing that the Western forces will support Christian because the Western countries are Christian. And unfortunately, few Iraqis Christian believe these advertisements. But soon after, they found that American and the British are not concerned in such vision. The evidence is that predominantly Christian neighborhoods such as Aldora. Dora was very, very big uh, neighborhood in Baghdad, central Baghdad. The majority of the Christian were in that. There was about in this neighborhood. Uh, 30,000 families. Uh, neighborhoods such as Aldora in the center of Baghdad being a, uh, a scene for acts of murder and abduction against Christian and were cleansed their prisons under the sign of American when their number reached more than 160,000 soldiers. People, Christian, were killed and kidnapped and abducted, and and they were everything happened in that area uh, under the vision and American. And they are, while their number at that time was one hundred sixty thousand in Iraq, Christian were killed by terrorist groups as a revenge to the American exercises. The Christian were they. They, the Christian pay the cost of the existence of American. They were killed when when those insurgents they don't uh, reach the American. He's coming to his neighbor, which who is Christian, to kill him. Uh, he he thinks that he's revenging uh, of American. Besides, HHRO recorded the murder of twenty eight Christian at the hand of American soldiers. We have our census, we have the names of people that killed by the American soldier. So Christian paid the price of American prisons while they didn't benefit anything from them, no protection, no political support, even no moral support. Acts of murder, abduction, and displacement continue during that period of time, forcing few of them to sell their houses cheaply. People, they were sending their houses cheaply just to flood and to get money even is very cheap just to, to come to Europe, to, to Jordan, to Lebanon, just to flood. Christian neighborhoods such as Aldora became almost empty from any Christian presence. Their percentage dropped down to 20% uh, in New Baghdad, Al Jadida, Ghadir, Dora has become empty, and the other neighborhood, uh, then, then the percentage dropped to 20% in Baghdad, Jadida, Mashtal, Ghadir, Zayuna. This, this is this is neighborhood where, where the percentage of the Christian very high in this, and uh, Garajamana, Al, Al Mansur, uh, 
Kavada, Zayuna, almost 80 percent left from this neighborhood. The stores of Christian and Ezidis in Baghdad were subject to burning and extortion unless they agreed to pay certain ransom. They will, they will send you a threat. If you will not pay for them, that they will burn. The second day, your, your shop will be burned. Christian houses and properties were seized in a, in a different location in Baghdad and Mosul. Uh, consider as it was considered as spoil ghanima they called ghanima in arabi considered as spoil which they have right to take it according to a different or the different justification i will give some statistic of hammurabi very fast because i w- would like to come to what happening now and i will go very fast now <clears throat> April, from April 2003 to the end of 2015, HHRO recorded more than 881 Christian killed, inclu- including 668 killed according to their identity by unknown. Yes. 16% of those killed represented the component and ex- uh, ex- experience group. Doctors, engineers, as I said, professors, pharmacists, and teachers. 14% were women. 4% of those 881 was children. 4% elderly, 1.6% clergy. During 2004, the largest killing of Christians took place. 211 were killed. In 2007, about 100 uh, uh, 58 were killed and in 2015 we saw the smallest amount of killing with only two people killed. Baghdad where, uh, was or where the majority of the, the the majority of the killing were in Baghdad. 58 percent of Christians were killed in Baghdad followed by Nineveh where 29 percent were killed. Amorabi organization documented 72 cases of encroachment, attacking against the church and monastery until the end of 2013. But this number have risen drastically after the invasion of Mosul and Nineveh plain by the terrorist group of the Islamic State. Dozens of church and monasteries in the center of Mosul and Nineveh plain were desecrated. This is uh, this was a st- a statistic of Hammurabi. Daesh. What, what happened at Daesh? We don't want to give final numbers for what happened to minorities such as Yazidis, Christian, Shabak, Kakais, and other under Daesh. It's enough to recognize that it was genocide. Thousands of Christian Ezidis and Shabak are missing while we don't know what happened to them. Daesh tried to wipe out Ezidis, Christian Shabak, and Shia Turkmen using murder, sexual enslavement, and displacement, imposing harsh, harsh living conditions, taking children away from their families and training them forcing people to change their religious beliefs, killing those who refuse to convert, selling women and girls in captives' markets, giving them as a present and exchanging them. Considering Yazidis and Christian infidel, Daesh described Yazidis as a pagan minority, which always for the enslavement of their women and considering them as as, as a spoil of war. Ghanima. This is what you have to learn this in, in Arabic. Ghanima. That they have right to. Yeah. 
More than one million minority left their cities, towns, and villages in the Nineveh plain, Sinjar, Talafar, and other areas because they were threatened. No such, no church or Christian of Christian church or Christian or Ezidi temple wasn't subject to vandalism or destruction. Negative indicator. This this is very uh, negative indicator. Nobody can convince civilians who are living in very bad situation, who are displaced, uh, and they they have they don't have any future, and to convince them not to think about immigration and seeking safe shelter. The existence of indica uh, indicators of division that will take place in the form of federal system of small. The country is going to division in this uh, because there is no uh, strong uh, federal government. Until this moment, minority haven't been taken into account with respect to the Western and Iraqi policy. They are neglected. Disputes in between the large component are ongoing about minority ter uh, territories without the participation of minority in the negotiation. The area of minority is called disputes area. The, the Kurds are uh, fighting with Arab Sunni for the territory of the minority, while this, with this territory is not belong to any one of them. And also, when there is the negotiation to to uh, to have a future for this territory, they are not participation. They are not participate the minority in this negotiation. Uh, the indifference expressed by the international community and the lack of interest shown by the West and especially American as a key player who could influence 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 this issue. Minority have no cards to play, but escaping this better situation and adopting immigration as solution. They have no card, just they are thinking of immigration as a solution, despite the fact that minority understand that, that immigration is one of the difficult and very bitter solution. Not better, bitter. The number of Christian have decreased until it reached uh, 300,000 out of 1 million and a half. The number decreased from 1 million and a half 2003, now became, is not exceed the 300,000. More than th uh, 3,000 Yazidis have left Iraq, Iraq after the invasion of the Islamic State. This is very important to, to come to the scenarios, what's happening maybe after Daesh, what will happen. This is that people, they afraid to return. They are scared to return because such scenarios. Now, there is talk about some scenario. There is a scenario or talk to establish governorate for the Christian. While the Christian are divided, some of them, they don't like that. And the other, they are asking, yes, we, we, we want that. Dividing Nineveh into six government, governorate and making it a region such as the Kurdistan region. Uh, they, they, they are, they, there is a uh, scenario to make like Sinjar and governorate, Talafar, another governorate, Nineveh plain, another governorate, Mosul governorate about six governorate and this area Nineveh will become all as a region like Kurdistan region. This is another scenario. There is no doubt no, uh, dividing minority territories between the KRG and the presumed Sunni region which is frequently talked about. Some some scenarios to divide the area, for example, uh, the Tilkev district to go to uh, Kurdistan and Hamdani and other places of the Christian to Sunni region. This is also another scenario. 
there is no doubt that someone is pushing Christian and Yazidis to demand a governorate. You know, there is there are some groups they are pushing Christian to ask for the for, for the governorate because they think that after the Christian will maybe they will make propaganda and lobby in the United States to get this governorate and in the end they will join it to their area. For example, KRG they are trying uh, uh, they are looking to include if there is such kind of government to their region. Also the Sunni uh, would like to do that for themselves. So uh, indicator side that Iraq cannot be back as a strong unified state. It is going toward division whether it is in the forum of the federal system or Iraq. I, I don't believe that Iraq will go again a very strong unified state. The situation of the, of the Iraq now is not uh, ready to be such uh, in such cases. So all the indicators show that Iraq is going to divide either to uh, federal uh, federal parts or maybe very small states. Although it's cons uh, constitutionally the, the 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 establishing government is is something. Uh, we have right constitutionally to to ask for the government it's constitutional to establish a government for minority but this doesn't serve christian because such solution is late while their number continue to decrease and they wouldn't have an effective percentage in the policy making making process with the governorate i would like to explain that before daesh then the population uh, the percentage of Christian population in Nineveh plain was about 23%. Uh, after Daesh, people uh, displaced to Erbil, Duhok, different places. From this, those people who displaced to Erbil on Duhok, on KRG, 50% of them left the area. They, 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 they traveled, they immigrated to France, to Europe, to the United States. So, what remain now in Erbil and Duhok in the region is about 50% of the displaced. So, we expect 50% uh, of this 50, they will return. So, the percentage in, in, in Nineveh plain will be from 23 to 10%. When when we when we establish such govern, uh, governorate, this percentage is not influence percentage uh, for the Christian in this governorate. So, if establishing a government is is the adopted solution, if there is de facto solution, then it's it's according to my view, uh, then it it will be good if the uh, governorates consist of Christian and Yazidi because they are non-Muslim minority and are able to live together with this problem. The establishing, uh, establishment of such governorate should be based on their will but uh, they, they cannot bring the Yazidis and Christian without their will. They, they, they should accept uh, if they would like to be together. But the challenges remain in that it, uh, how to how to recognize the border or to make the border. Uh, the challenges remain in the detail of how the border would be established while there are towns of other component within their territory because there is uh, villages of Izidi, Shebek, and uh, Turkoman very close to the uh, uh, towns of the Christians. So how they will draw the map for this government, I don't know. Maybe there are some specialists who know that. The, govern the government is prepared to be a region linked to Baghdad. We don't want like to be this region, if, if, if it is de facto, a governorate for the Christian and Yazidi, 
we would like it link it with Baghdad, not with Sunni region or Kurdish region, region, because we believe that to be part of the whole is better to be part of the part. To be part of Iraq is better to be part because that's been we are not against Arab Sunni or the Kurd. We like them. They are people. They are our our people. They are Iraqi, but. We didn't like that Christian will pay the cost of the behavior of the court or Sunni of their exercises of of their attitude against Turkey, against uh, Baghdad, the conflict between Erbil and Baghdad. Why the Christian and Azidis will pay the cost of such kind of uh, relationship? Linking a function, this I I, I extend that. In our opinion, I think we, we should now postponing demanding for the governorate for minority of Christian only, trying to keep the former. Now, I think, uh, after liberating Daesh in a very short period, uh, I think it's important to keep the former administrative the structure, the former structure, the old structure, while developing self-administrative to, to do some changes. Conducting new election for the provisional sub-district and district council. Adopting the system of town council. This is very important. To make like Hamdani and town council and Bartolola town council. This council has the right, has veto to them, to some decision of coming from Baghdad or from Mosul or from Erbil. Especially those decisions uh, concerning the land. Because Christian and Azidi, they are scared of changing the identity of the land because of the changing demographic of the land. So those uh, city council or the town council uh, should have veto decision taken by higher authorities in case it contradict with the interest of the people of this own of their this own this town. Asking for participation for the representation of minority in any dialogue of negotiation concerning the fate of their territories that I, I, I spoke about. Excluding minority ter territories from the dispute area to normalize this area of minority from the dispute area because, yeah, because those is, uh, the, uh, area is uh, others they are fighting for. The facts indicate that Christian presence in Iraq is on the this is this is very deep. The fact indicate that Christian presence in Iraq is on the way toward extension, according to these facts that I mentioned. And the rest of minority are facing the same danger. Diversity is in a is in danger in case the current situation continue as it is. If, if the current situation go on. We we are the Christian. They are going to vanishing, and the minority and the diversity, and also the future of Iraq. When the diversity will finish, the future of Iraq is in danger. Uh, I don't. I believe that uh, if the minority of the Christian finished of, from Iraq and Yazidis, and uh, I believe that there is no future for Iraq and there is no settlement in Iraq. The survival of Christian and other non-Muslim religious minority in the countries of the of the East is confined to the will of Muslim and to the mood of the rulers and not to the clear, constant, strategic Islamic approach. There is no any approach. Is now our our life is under the uh, the mood of the rulers of the president. Or the prime minister is good. He like Christian. We are we are okay. If he's, he hate Christian, we are not okay. Uh, there is no any uh, constant ideology and uh, uh, approach uh, for how to deal with the non-Muslim. It depends. It, it differ from time to time. It differ from person to person who is ruling uh, the country. 
the international position must be clear and decisive to limit act of religious extremists, extremism, Islamic fundamentalism, and terrorism. Liberating and uh, cleansing minority territories from the presence of Daesh and terrorist group as fast as possible while working on preparing elements for the return of IDP to their area and compens uh, compensating them. You know, as I said, I, I don't believe people, they will return if there, is, if there is no any entity to impose the law, if there is no justice, if there is accountability for those committed crime. They cannot return because people don't trust. And also, now there is different group of militias. Christians have three militia. Yazidis have three militia, some pro-court, other pro-PKK, some uh, pro-PDK. Uh, Even the Shabak, some they are with the Kurd and the other with Hashid. Some Shabak are uh, the Sunni, they they left with Daesh and 80% of them a Shiite. They, uh, we don't know when they will return, maybe we will face revenge. And the Yazidis, maybe uh, those, those persons who lost their, uh, uh, some members of his family and his, his daughter or his wife was captivated, uh, uh, how he could deal with other neighbors from the villages of Arab after return, reconciliation is, uh, we have to put some uh, strategic for, uh, for reconciliation, it's not easy because maybe we will face revenging, we will, uh, we will face uh, another conflict between those militia groups now who are liberating Najafi, the previous governor of Mosul has his militia, Christian have different militia, and after that, who will control the power? Nobody knows. So the people very scared of return. Uh, uh, for example, now, let's say uh, uh, Sinjar was liberated about one it's uh, approximately one year, and five percent of uh, Yazidis till now return to to Sinjar. So I expect maybe Hamdani at Karakrosh or Thalkev or this is the area of the Christian. Maybe they will face uh, the same things. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for delay a little bit, but I think it was important to to go through everything.